doesn't like a good WWE documentary? Always well produced and usually giving you a glimpse of life behind the scenes is an area the company has often thrived in. You do have to remember they're only going to give you their version of events, which sometimes are not exactly on the money, but if you treat it as entertainment, you'll be fine. On occasion, though, small bits of info do slip through the cracks, and often it gives you far more insight than anybody meant to put out there. So I am Simon from What Culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. And this is 10 Wrestling Documentaries that accidentally uncovered major scoops. Number 10, the creative process. Now, obviously, learning about how wrestling stories come together is very common for most WWE documentaries, but this one was a little bit different. Happening in the 2020 network special Live Forever, we were treated to the life and times of Liv Morgan and how literally nothing is ever set in stone. For example, you see Morgan warming up for a match with Ember Moon, which then gets cancelled seconds before it's meant to go on. I mean, understandably, the former Riot Squad member is baffled. This then continues as Liv is continually brought to TV only to learn the powers that be have nothing for her. And the whole thing is a bit like watching a wrestler get more and more confused. I mean, I didn't know what was going on and I wasn't anywhere near it. So I'm pretty sure this was not the idea of the documentary, but it absolutely will be your takeaway. Number nine, Vince McMahon chats to Keith Lee. Given what has happened to Keith Lee in the WWE now, this one will raise your eyebrow. Once again, straight from the network, we see McMahon and chatting to Lee, telling him that he can see the potential and together they're going to zoom to the moon. Keith is then shown getting all pumped up and ready to run through a wall. And within one calendar year, he had been released. Sheesh. If we had tried and it had all gone wrong, then fair enough. But the whole Keith Lee experiment on the main roster was mad. It seemed like management wasn't happy with his physique, so put him in a singlet. And then he would win and lose and win and lose, even when it came to the most random of matches. For example, he defeated Randy Orton and then lost to nearly everybody else. He then became the bear cat, and it really did feel like we were taking everything that made him unique and undoing it. It wasn't helping. An extended health scare seemed to be the end of it all, which brings up its own questions. But with that in mind, at least Lee recovered from that. This is what really matters, but yeah, this should serve as some sort of reminder that you probably shouldn't take Vinny Mac at his word. Number eight, Vince McMahon and Kevin Owens. Well, this one will make your toes curl. Some say it was done for the cameras, but that seems generous. And if you want to see it for yourself, just tune in to the Kevin Owens 24-7 special. For you do indeed see KO walking back past the boss after his WrestleMania 33 match with Chris Jericho. And when he asks McMahon if they're cool, Vince says no. He also looked like he's about to murder someone. And you can debate whether this bout was any good or not, but the sheer dismissal of a guy who more often than not delivers will make your heart sink. It's not like Owens gets any other proper feedback either. It's just a shake of the head and we are done. Kevin probably spent the rest of the night thinking about it too. That just makes me sad in my tum-tum. The seven, Vince McMahon and Tom McGee. This was treated as the holy grail for years. An apparent match where Bret Hart proved he was the best ever when he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with newcomer Tom McGee and made him look so good, Vince McMahon thought he'd found the next Hulk Hogan. This was mostly because McGee not only had the body, but some serious agility, and it impressed the boss so much he began doing backflips. He didn't care how inexperienced Tom was, they were going to strap the rocket to him. So when this fabled contest eventually appeared on the WWE Network and we all tuned in, it was quite clear that McMahon was looking in the wrong direction. I mean, fair play to McGee as it takes two to tango, but it was obvious that the hitman was the star here because he knew how to make anybody look good. He just played to their strengths without putting any of his own ego into it. The main takeaway was even back in 1986, the chairman of the board could easily be distracted by bodies. And thankfully, that's changed these days. <laughs> and if you believe that, you have not been watching. Number six, The Real Ultimate Warrior. Over to the A&E run of WWE documentaries that aired in 2020 now, in particular the episode on The Ultimate Warrior. It's long been known that the former Jim Helwig was a controversial cat to say the least, but seeing the man lose his cool during a pseudo promo was something else it all began when a child approached the warrior in an airport wanting an autograph quite wrongly the ultimate one told him to flub off and when this incident escalated the one-time wwe champion was told by mcmahon to record an apology video for some reason the warrior didn't want to do this and pitched a fit during the whole thing forcing vince to try and coddle him like a child and yes you see this happening in the documentary. You can also hear McMahon's voice off screen trying to comfort and coerce Helwig into doing it. And the whole thing is so uncomfortable and it's so damn weird. McMahon even describes the whole thing as a work which makes it even more squeamish. 
not really sure this is the way you should be treating your fans. Number 5. The RVD Documentary Changes Direction Rob Van Dam's headstrong documentary by Reels was meant to show the former wrestler making his way into stand-up comedy. It sounded like reality TV at its best and who knows, maybe the master of the five-star frog splash had the chops to make it in a different industry. As it turned out, we're never gonna know. Because the big spin with this is that Rob was suffering so badly from the effects of CTE, it soon became clear that his memory isn't what it once was, right down to not being able to remember the jokes he was going to tell. It soon came out that this was also the case when he was in Impact Wrestling 2, as he struggled to recall spots and the whole vehicle took an unexpected turn. It's all speculation at best as you can only diagnose CTE after studying someone's brain, but the evidence is there seeing it happen in front of your eyes is heartbreaking. You'd have to figure this is a result of the many, many horrendous chair shots RVD took throughout the years, and to see this play out, just prepare yourself. Number 4. Wrestling with Shadows Another documentary that just switches gears halfway through filming. Every wrestling fan needs to see this. Wrestling with Shadows was meant to be a love letter to the retirement of Bret the Hitman Hart, and then soon became an essential companion to the Montreal Screwjob, and just how dirty a lot of people in WWE did the Hitman. I mean, this has everything. Not only do you hear Vince McMahon agree to the DQ finish at the Survivor Series 1997, which obviously didn't happen, but you see the main players all deny it. Shawn Michaels claims he was also duped, as does Triple H. And as we know today, they were all involved. It is simply astonishing to witness, especially as Hart's then wife Julie takes all these guys to task, and seeing firsthand how much this affects Brett is no fun. It's quite the reveal, given that this was never meant to cover such things. So if you have not, go and see this today you will be slack-jawed the entire time. Number 3. Neville is Done Happening during an episode of Ride Along, this series quickly became a window into how bizarre the world of WWE is. And that's kind of amazing given it was just meant to be wrestlers driving from town to town with a camera in their face. But not only did one episode result in Bailey explaining to Fox Sports that indeed, yes, they all pay for their own travel, but it also underlined that Neville was not a happy camper. Airing in 2017 and built around Sasha Banks and the Hugger, the pair spar Neville at rest stop so decide to take a selfie with him. Without missing a beat, the soon-to-be pack ask if this is for Ride Along, and when it's confirmed, he says that the show can flub off. Unsurprisingly, that same month he left the company because no, as already stated, he was not happy at all. Number 2. The Dark Side of the Ring Vice's wrestling series does exactly what it says on the tin, some episodes are genuinely quite harrowing. Even then, though, it still manages to ask even bigger questions of the industry, often leaving us fans to wonder what the hell is going on, because none of this sounds any good. One that saw heads roll was focused on the now infamous plane ride from hell, a flight that has often been pitched as a comedic frat road trip as opposed to what it really was, totally inappropriate. The revelation saw Tommy Dreamer and Ric Flair put into the corner, and the fallout underlined the fact that this wasn't an isolated incident. Just go and find some Brutus the Barber beefcake shoot interviews where he essentially says drugging people's drinks was not just to make fools of other wrestlers. It is just horrible from top to bottom, and all the proof you need that the locker room of today is far better than it was, and any calls to return to that are simply stupid. Number 1. Dean Ambrose becomes John Moxley on WWE TV Dean Ambrose left the WWE in 2019 before joining AEW as John Moxley. It was a defining moment in all elite wrestling, but the transformation actually happened in 2018 during the Chronicle Network documentary, and watching it now is quite frankly amazing. Shot half in kayfabe and half in reality, it covered Ambrose's return from injury and subsequent heel turn. Aside from the struggles of how bad his woes were to get back to the ring, you get a visual representation of how confused he was by everything WWE was doing with his character, and that really, he doesn't want to be there anymore. On more than one occasion, he snaps as yet more daft storylines are thrown his way, and if you want to see the birth of Mox, watch this. And that's not an exaggeration either. Clearly realizing he's not going to be with WWE much longer, he just throws all caution to the wind. It is absolutely fascinating to witness. Know of any other wrestling documentaries that accidentally uncovered major scoops? Make sure you let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read articles like this. Make sure you come say hello on social media. And please do watch another video. It's good for all of your ailments. It's not. My name is Simon from WhatCulture. Thank you for joining me as always. And I will talk to you again very, very soon.